two people were injured and the female shooter shot dead. Maria Villarreal has that story. Chaos erupting at Joel Olstein's Houston megachurch, Lakewood, after a barrage of gunfire. I was just walking uh, up the stairs and when I got when I got on the top, like it started, they started shooting. I don't know, like, I just heard, but it was like more than 10 shots. Levi Andrade capturing the moment shots rang out. We're shooting at Lakewood, two people down, we need an ambulance. The shooter taken down, but during the gunfire, a young child shot, now in critical condition. We need to kind of for the child. All of this unfolding just before Spanish service was set to start with hundreds of parishioners in attendance. She entered the building. She was armed with a long rifle and a trench coat with a backpack, accompanied by a small child, approximately four to five years old. Dozens of first responders on scene as parents reunited with their children. This is my church home. I go here every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying right now for our pastor. This is an evil world. It's different for us in America now than it was in terms of the tolerance of Christianity. This is certainly an evil world, and it's an evil thing to see a church shooting reported. Lakewood Church of Houston, Texas, Joel Osteen's church, there was a reported shooting, and that's a terrible thing. And I've also seen some nasty comments just because it's Joel Osteen. We know, of course, a bad theology of Joel Osteen. This is not the time to talk about that, and we don't need to be commenting on that. We should be praying for everyone involved, and I've got three things I'm going to talk about here real quick. Then I'm going to send it to John MacArthur at the end. You'll want to stick around for that, where he talks about persecution. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'll play a short clip from MacArthur. I'll come back and talk about those three things. Let's go to this clip. It's different for us in America now than it was in terms of the tolerance of Christianity. This is an evil world. And it has a massive capacity to kill and maim because its father is, is, a, is a killer and a liar. So I think cultural protections have been pulled away. We, we, we're, we're, now, we're now where the early church was. There definitely have been many cultural protections taken away. And what we need to understand is in Houston, Texas, and really almost anywhere in America, Joel Osteen and any mega church is a symbol of Christianity to them. Like it or not, that's a symbol of what Christianity is. They don't know the difference, so they just see a big church. And so if the church was targeted for religious reasons, we don't know that yet, but uh, it's a symbol of Christianity. So I want to talk about three things uh, that are important to remember. A couple of them are things that I appreciate, at least, the way that the mayor and police chief handle this. And there are also, of course, sad things here. So let's get started. Number one, number one, we see that uh, the mayor and police chief both acknowledged and asserted the vital importance of protecting religious institutions. This is important. This is a really good thing. There was kind of a sacredness there. Uh, there was uh, something that really you wouldn't expect. They demonstrated respect for the freedom of worship. Uh, they treated churches with sacredness, and they revealed that they believed that the act would basically was especially wicked. It was especially wicked because people were targeted inside of a church building. That's a really good thing to hear from secular government, and uh, it's good to hear that in this day and age. Number two, this is a warning to all Christians of the hatred for Christianity that the world has. We need to pray for God's protection over our own churches as well as Lakewood Church. And I hope this causes you to pray for Lakewood Church, pray for everyone involved, pray for uh, the protection of all believers, absolutely, because when we see something like that, it certainly is a sign of the times, a sign of the cultural situation in our country and in the state. Number three, we must remember Jesus' sober warning to his followers. You'll remember some of those warnings. In John 15, verse 18, he says, If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. That's, that's right. This is a, a promise to all believers that will be hated uh, in the name of Christ, that all Christians, that 
live for godliness will be hated and even those that aren't exactly teaching uh solid biblical truth they're they're in the the camp of christianity and so they're going to be treated very similar and similarly in many ways uh matthew 10 verse 21 to 22 brother they will deliver uh brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but the one who endures to the end will be saved and that's a sad promise that exists but it means churches need to better prepare their congregations yes there's preparation that needs to occur and so what we see we see some doctrinal preparation absolutely prepare for persecution a theology of suffering the church is very much lacking in a theology of suffering there needs to be preaching on suffering so people understand that suffering for christ is the norm uh that living in a in a protected uh situation that we've been living in for the last several hundred years is really the exception not the norm so that needs to be taught and amp up security measures churches absolutely need to be amping up security measures anyone in the church that has that ability uh and just anyone that can help out in that way needs to be working and helping to get the church more secure and prepared for being targeted Yes, so those are very, very sad things. And now we're going to move along. We're going to move along to John MacArthur and close it out with him where he talks about persecution. Persecution has always been a reality in the church since the book of Acts. Always. Persecution has always been against the true church. The true church, the true gospel, the true Lord is hated by the ruler of this world, and he is the ruler of this world system, and all men who don't belong to him are part of that system. They are of their father, the devil, and consequently, the true church is always under attack. This is no surprise. But on the other hand, we don't have to fear persecution because persecution historically has accomplished the purposes of God. We need to expect it. We need to embrace it. We need to keep courageous and bold and proclaim the truth in the midst of persecution and know that God will use persecution to accomplish His divine purpose. Do not ever underestimate the power of persecution to accomplish God's purpose. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for uh, great is their reward in heaven. Rejoice in that day and be glad. Well, we can certainly rejoice in that day and be glad. We need to remember that. And uh, you heard MacArthur also talk about how the true church is persecuted, and that's absolutely right. But it's also true that false churches are persecuted, cults are persecuted. Anyone that's holding to Judeo-Christian values is going to be persecuted. We ought to be praying for them. We ought to be praying uh, for their protection. We ought to be praying also for them to come to saving faith through the true gospel. And uh, we need to remember we're not living for this world, but we're living to be with our Lord and Savior in eternity. And whoa, what a glorious day that will be. Well, God bless you. Thanks for joining me today for Truth Transforms. My name's Adam Markley. The goal of Truth Transforms is to transform hearts and transform minds through the truth of God's word. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Let's help us reach more people. God bless you, and I will see you in the next episode.